Okay, so we are gathered for another sculpture forum. Um, and uh, this time we've been to see a show uh, at Matthew Mark's gallery of work by Anne Truitt. And we are joined for this particular forum by a uh, good friend, Lydia Gladkova, the exciting young sculptor who has joined us before. And the, uh, we're honored to have with us uh, the young, distinguished critic, curator, historian, Sam Cornish, who is joining us from Great Britain. Thank you, Sam. It's it's great to have you. Um, uh, and the usual crew, of course, Jock Ireland, uh, Brant Johnso, and myself. Uh, we have um, a video uh, and some still shots of the show taken by the wonderful Mallory Marks. Thank you, Mallory. And this whole thing is being recorded and will be edited by the incredibly efficient Nicole Oliveira. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Anne Truitt. Um, uh, Anne Truitt was, a, I guess, a sculptor, painter, writer, died in 2004, I believe, probably at the age of about 83. I'd seen um, a couple of shows of Anne Truitt's work before. I've never kind of quite been able to make up my mind what I thought about them. I was eager to see this show, and I felt I felt that this show was easily the best that I've seen of her work, and um, and I began to get some kind of sense that I was coming to grips with it. But I, I'll leave it there for now and open it up to whoever wants to jump in. Um, hi. Well, I haven't seen her work before. That was the first one, and I was very curious. I understand she hasn't made these. Uh... I would say prisms, wooden prisms. She had drawings, measurements, um, dimensions, um, very carefully chosen, and then a cabinet maker would make them. Now, it's not that I figured it out looking at them that she didn't make them, I looked it up. Um, but now, since I know it, <clears throat> I wonder why she did it this way. Perhaps she wasn't very handy. I don't know. I understand that. I'm not handy myself. But they are, you know, it's not that it's some sophisticated carpentry involved. She could have made them herself. But apparently she wanted them to be well made in the same sense that a bookshelf can be well made. And then she had a elaborate laborious process working on the surface painting um sanding painting sanding many layers of that and um, that bothers me disappoints me I, i'm sorry what exactly disappoints you that she didn't make them ah that's important to you that she didn't make them that she didn't fabricate the actual objects herself no she did not yeah I, and that that's a problem for you that's a big problem for me Mm, okay, um, Sam. Um, I I I didn't feel that as a problem, but perhaps uh, I'm not a maker myself, so I don't know if that plays into that difference. Um, the thing I'm thinking, looking at um, this film, is that I'd completely forgotten about the wall-based works, with the exception of the ones we're seeing right at the moment, which are the kind of more brushy, expressive ones in the final room. Um, and I think part of that, part of why I forgot about the the two works in the first two spaces, my attention was um, really captured uh, by the kind of relations and the spaces between the three sculptures in the center, um, in the central space. That's the thing that I found sort of fascinate most most sort of captivating um and perhaps i don't know about this but perhaps one of the reasons i was not so interested in whether she'd made them or not was that i was much more interested in what was happening between the sculptures than in any of them as individual works of art i you know i could have spent a long time walking around um lo longer than we did walking around 
um, those three columns in the center. Um, but perhaps I wouldn't have been spending that much time looking at any one of them in, in particular. It was a sense for sort of clarified space that existed between the three objects that really um, kind of drew me in. Yeah, I should I should perhaps have briefly described the, the, the exhibition. It's very spare. Um, and the gallery, which is quite a large space, has been divided into three separate um, areas uh, with a, can, a wall uh, dividing them up. And in the first space, uh, which is, uh, I would guess the three spaces are not quite equal. Um, the, the two, the first one and the, and, the, and the rear one being slightly smaller than the middle space. But in, in, in the first space, there is one of these columns that, uh, that Anne uh, Truitt seemed to be her hallmark form. Um, and one work on, on the wall, one painting on the wall. And that's all. And in the middle space, there are three of these column uh, things and, and one work on the wall. And in the rear space, I think there are three works on paper on, on the wall and one, just one object, uh, a fairly large, not column uh, object. And I think that's perhaps the earliest work in the show. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so that that's that's, you're talking about the middle space with the three, with the three columns and one, one, uh, one vertical work on the wall. I recall, um, which kind of relates to the columns. Okay, Brand Jock. I didn't really uh, experience it much in terms of space, and when I think about it now, um, I don't know that uh, you know abstract sculpture really has so much traction in the uh, space between. I think, I mean, things that have gaze and that stand or, you know, I mean, things that are more like us uh, really engage space. And as I think about it, like, you know, I mean, one can make a composition of abstract objects, of course, but in terms of how they interact, I don't know, you know, it's kind of slight. But the the way that I um, looked at these things was as uh, freestanding panel paintings. So it seems to me that the construction wasn't it really is important because they they have to hold up over years the same way an old master painting on wood has to. The joints have to be reliable. They would really be compromised if they cracked, or opened up somehow. Um, I uh, I couldn't help but think about the show in terms of the way I first became aware of her work, which was through uh, Donald Judd's writing. That I, I recall her being one of the few sculptors he spoke with, spoke of with any kind of approval. And I kept thinking of of how she would have fit in and not at that time, and how much better she fits in now. Uh, at, at this point, I, you know, I really don't think of her work in those terms at all. It seems really a matter of, of feeling rather than, than being. Yeah, I, 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 I remember seeing her work uh, many years ago, and I guess, um, I guess at the Emirate Gallery in the seventies, and, um, and I was kind of intimidated by it. I didn't get it. I uh, felt I had to go and read Arc Forum to figure it out. And I never, or, you know, over the past many years, have, haven't, um, haven't really connected with her. But um, I, I did get a kick out of this show. And I got a kick out of it at, more um, as sort of three-dimensional paintings. Uh, it, it was the color and the um, and the care that went into uh, each piece that um, that that pleased me, that reached me, um, and, and it the sort of flicker between 
two dimensions and three dimensions, the sort of evanescent flutter of something or other really touched me or that they're, you know, they were more than just boxes or columns of wood. There was a uh, feeling in this, in the color and the, uh, in the painting. Uh, and uh, th that surprised me and delighted me. Um, and it does feel a bit thin. Uh, I, but as I say, I enjoyed the show very much. Yeah, I, I, I found myself um, uh, really, uh, um, I kind of, um, you know, excited by it. Uh, I, I, I began to think of her as one of these artists working at the threshold of perception. Um, you know. Um, and and I found that if I just stood still in in, in any of those spaces and just uh, kind of opened myself up to what was happening, um, almost in a kind of blank stare, uh, things became remarkably energized. Um, the space, as as Sam was saying, particularly in the middle room, uh, became very. I felt very. I felt it became quite energized um and and it didn't it, i began to think that the individual objects themselves were were there to somehow to make something happen between them rather than as individual works in their own right and 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 you know however um you know um carefully they are um, handled and uh you know, painted, uh, finished, uh, constructed. Um, the, 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 that that the, to, 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 you know, there didn't seem to be a, a kind of whole lot of value in staring at one of them in as a, as a thing in its own right. It seemed very important. It you know to 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 to, to let it have space and relate to other things. Um, there, I mean, I I was very aware. I became very aware that in the in the middle room, somebody I don't know if it was Sam or or Jock or somebody had put a bag down. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <laughs> and that began to really annoy me. It began to really take up. Uh, you know, it was not supposed to be there, and it was very clear that it wasn't supposed to be there. And I became very aware of a grating in the front room which seemed to almost have been very carefully placed, or the objects have been very carefully placed in relation to it, so that it also became part of the, you know, of, of what was happening. Um, I thought this was just an exquisitely curated show and 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 brought the work, you know, to, to life in a way that I have been totally kind of unaware of it before. Uh, as I said, having seen two or three shows and, and never seen one, um, you know, that seemed to kind of reveal what the work was about in the way that this one, for me, did. And maybe I'm completely misreading it, but that I, I, I was, I was, uh, and I, 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 Sam, I, you know, that vertical piece that we're looking at now that's on the wall seemed very important in that. Uh, in that middle room is a vertical painting uh, about the same proportions as one of the columns on the wall in that middle room. And that that began to be, um, that began to, to stretch the space in a way uh, and, and begin to make it a quite, quite a lot more ambiguous as, as you know. Uh, anyway, that that's, that's my sense. Can I just return to something that that Brandt said about um, engaging space um, with the kind of gaze or with how how the how the body or I'm not sure exactly the words that you used and that those those seemed like a very kind of active and physical and in many ways really sculptural in a particular in a particular very sort of deep sense way of engaging space but the way that these the columns 
operated seat does seem very different and the way they were in the space activated the space was much more to do with their sense their very slight and but slightly varied um sense of sort of levitation that they were sort of just suspend you know the, the the sort of shadow gaps beneath them brought them from being things that stood on the ground to being things that almost hung in the space as a whole and i felt that was part of part of the magic i mean it's i kind of i guess it's sort of obvious in a way that you can see that that's happening but how it enabled the the those the, the three columns to interact i thought was was really beautiful yeah, uh, and 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 the the piece, I agree, I agree, and that, that's very important. Um, I, it it it's, it it seemed to me to be. I mean, I don't quite understand Lydia's concern about them not physically having been fabricated by Anne Truitt herself. Um, she clearly uh, knew exactly what she wanted in terms of the fabrication, or this simple enough. For it not to be an issue that some some other hand was involved, because there's no, you know, there's the the, the, the it, it isn't as if they can offer themselves as um, you know freshly handmade things. Um, the, 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 there is an intimacy about about them, and 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 that's very strange to kind of articulate exactly how. How that comes about, but I think it is because they have been. Um, I did just, they, they, you know, there's there's a warmth and an intimacy about them, which is surprising and remove. I mean, I totally removed from from uh, Donald Judd. I think, um, I, you know, more in more, almost more in the realm of uh, I don't know, Ad Reinhardt or uh, Carmen Herrera or. You know, um... yeah, I, I, I can't go there. Or what I was surprised by was um, that they got me thinking about Bill Tuck, William Tucker's new heads, and this the sense in which he's uh, uh, concerned about facing, having his heads face the viewer, and what facing. A sculpture a head might mean and the these the columns um i i respond to each one separately not um i mean this the space matters of course but uh but it, it's the amb ambiguity or, or you know the sense in which i didn't know how to face these columns i i thought i might be facing one but then the corner kind of slipped away or took me around it um and and this the uh well it 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 was fun to think about tucker's heads and not to think about all that stuff that was made back in the 60s and 70s the um it, it, this this work sort of came alive in the you know 21st century uh for me but i don't i don't think that's i, mean, I don't think i mean I, I certainly didn't think of, of of bill tucker's heads in in while in this show but but the point about um not knowing when you're facing these columns is relevant i think it, do, it, it does speak to the way in which they articulate the space did she decide where they went? No, she is. She no, died in two thousand four. She's no longer around, and I think that. that the I, I, yeah. This yeah, is no, by the curator or something. Th th this is a curatorial decision, and I and and I think whoever whoever curated the show did a superb job. It, it's it's also interesting to me, and I'm not quite sure what I think about this that the columns are, are all from very different years i think they go from the 70s to the 90s yes and, and i don't think you know if you walked in with no prior information um you would assume well you might you might well assume they were from a very 
um, concentrated period of time, but particularly the way they almost do seem like a whole um, singular singular installation or, 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 or tend in that direction anyway. Well, that's yeah. a good point. Well, she didn't make them and she didn't plan this show, right? I agree it was very well planned, right? But she didn't plan it this way. No. Yeah, she and made the things there, one by I one. I wasn't thinking of Bill Tucker for sure, but I was thinking of her. And she comes across as a very thoughtful person. They're not cold, they're not aloof, and the scare is touching, I agree. But I think what she cared about, I didn't care about. <laughs> you know, all this um, layers of faint, you know, it wasn't important for me at all. That's a that's the thing. I mean, it's really so much about color, <clears throat> which is, uh, you know, it's kind of a, <clears throat> elusive uh you know if, if one is not given to it it's a really elusive sensation and and then of course if one you know is musical in that sense then it's it's very concrete and self-sufficient yeah i think she spoke about color and she spoke about you know that being what for her was where it was at um I, you know, I mean, I, I believe, I mean, I haven't really kind of um, done done the work to make this statement, but my sense is that the columns were what she finally, the form that she finally settled on, that that piece in the back room is the earliest piece. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, of course, she settled on making columns, and, and, and the columns was basically her form. She didn't really, there was not a lot of variation except you know, but I found that piece in the back room a very powerful presence and very ambiguous presence. It 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 it, it felt at times very much like a kind of um, massive head and shoulders, and at other times. Oh, like it was a tombstone. Like a grave. Yes, I was about to say that, like a tombstone. Um, and at the same that. time, at the same time that it, it was huge and massive and felt like a tremendous presence. There was something quite ethereal about it as well. It almost wasn't there, you know, in yeah. a strange way. It's funny. It made me think of uh, Georgia O'Keeffe cityscapes. Think of Rock. Or uh, wow, what's that? I can't remember his name. Uh, American sculptor of the 20s, 30s. Shoot, they shouldn't have brought it up. I don't remember. <laughs> Happens to me all the time, Brent. Don't worry. <laughs> Robert something. Stores? Stores. Yes, thanks, John. Okay. I prefer well, hey, the, the simpler forms. Does anyone think of the back one uh, as reminiscent of a Rothko? Not I. I didn't. You think of the, the zones, the horizontal zones? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or the emotion of it. Uh, it seemed to me like she there was a sort of, it, it was interesting, but to me, I, I wasn't sort of convinced by it, but there was this kind of, struggle between the the form of the sculpture in the back room and the sense that she was trying to get an image of something into it whether it was a cityscape or you know uh, something that, that that there wasn't the 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 two things didn't really meet up in a way where if there's this sort of there's a sort of perfection in the column by by its sort of reduction that kind of avoids avoids that problem um, maybe the one in the back room was more interesting because of that, but um, it seemed like she was trying to get something into the sculpture which didn't didn't quite fit in some way. Um, but the reason it's more interesting is because it's not a column. I agree it's more interesting. <laughs> but uh, I want to say something about the room in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I th sorry, Lydia, what did you want to say? I want to say something about the room in the middle. I thought it was like a chapel, you know, there's, and people said something about it, about it being uh, transcendent, whatever, who said that? <clears throat> and I remember I was standing there thinking that it requires me to make sort of leap of faith, and I thought, no, I'm not a believer. <laughs> well... I, I, I think I think that's a, 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 that's a very interesting and pertinent observation. I think it did it did require that, that somehow the one 
um, I, I, I guess I guess be open to something to, to become to, to become aware of uh, how, what one was experiencing in a way that was absent some kind of idea about it. Um, in other words, it required you to make uh, this homework, right? I don't think homework. Maybe it's not the right word. Yeah, it had to, you know, you it, it it required you to commit to to, to it, right? I, I completely I completely agree, and I think you're I think that's that's right. I mean, something that occurred to me before we were just before we were started to talk about it was that it, it seemed to me a shame to have to talk about it, <laughs> and uh, particularly those the the columns in the middle room, and that obviously has got a religious. <laughs> you know kind of aspect to it that you sort of have to pass over it in silence and it some some mystery that you can't right 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 exactly exactly was, and, then, and that's why your uh, suitcase was such an offense yeah right? <laughs> yeah I, I i agree with i agree with all of that i don't i don't, I don't have any problem with that and and i mean you know clearly one does not go to Anne Truitt for looking for formal invention um and, and at the same time, I must note, that just in passing, that while um, you know the, the, we have this video and these still photographs, which, which are about as good as we're going to get, um, often when we when we do this and we we, we 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 you know we start talking about an exhibition after we've seen it, and when we're looking at you know uh, photographic images of it. Often the work looks better in the images than it did I, than what I experienced in the gallery. In this case, I think the, the you know the video and the images, in no way I think compare right. to being physically present in the space. It's virtually impossible, I think, to, to think that one could make a film or a, take photographs that would that would uh, disclose the, the experience of being present in that. There's space. made the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Well, to you, it requires a leap of faith. To me, I mean, and I and I, I, I hear you. I, I suppose that's true, but it, it didn't seem to me that I was. I mean, I, now you're talking me out of it, but but it didn't seem to me at the time that I was projecting something. Uh, I was experiencing something, um, and it and it. I was it, very it, touched. I have to say, I was touched. I kind of could sense her as a person. Well, at least I was imagining <clears throat> that. Yeah, uh, but it's an immaterial presence that that uh, I I am touched by her precision and her thoughtfulness and her longing very much. Um, what? And I felt like I, you know, I want to be as careful being there as she was making them. But I didn't feel uh, transcendent or something. I wonder about uh, that. That you know, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, what's the word? Uh. I wasn't converted. No. About Agnes Martin. Yes. Yes, Agnes Martin came to mind very much. Very much. Thank you, Mari. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. It was Juan Collars. Uh, I, I, I mean, just just to to accept what Sam said, it does seem a shame that we have to talk about it at all. Um, and 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 maybe we should. We maybe we've done it. Maybe we've done enough. I think we've got. I think we've conveyed our sense of it quite well. Anybody? I don't know whether I should reply or not, Garth. Well, I'm waiting to see if if somebody. I mean, I think I I I don't want to say any more. But but if somebody does want to say more, I don't want to stop them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could kind of say, well, it's all very precious, you know. Uh, and 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 all very 
contingent on 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 uh, you know curatorial judgment. Uh, yeah, I don't think that would be fair. Yeah. I, yeah. I, no, that I agree, Brent. That's it's not that it's you're having or it seems a, that there's a problem accepting this immaterial, uh, almost spiritual presence or uh, mm -hmm. uh, but that presence is real or th that flickering evanescent thing is is tangible in that uh in that at the matthew marks gallery now yeah it, it's vulnerable but it's still definitely there you know it's yeah right right um yeah vulnerable vulnerable is right so yeah exactly it, it, and 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 uh you know what one 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 needs one yeah exactly good all right well thank you very all much right. everybody